Drug overdose deaths have risen steadily over the past two decades, with drug poisoning propelling unintentional injuries to become the third leading cause of all deaths in the United States. The rate for drug poisoning deaths involving opioid analgesics nearly quadrupled in the recent few years and was declared a national emergency in the United States just a few years back. Niloxone is an opioid antagonist that is used to temporarily reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. Expanding the awareness and availability of this medication is a key part of the public health response to the opioid epidemic. Niloxone is a highly effective and is highly effective and has saved lives from opioid overdoses but can only do so if it's in the right hands at the right time. So <clears throat> addictions and drug overdose is one of those diseases that has um, has had some type of an effect on every individual directly or indirectly. Personally growing up in a household uh, where addictive behaviors were prevalent and then being in a marriage with a person who succumbed to opioid addiction allowed me to have a better understanding on the psychological and physiological effects of addiction including opioids. So what does it mean and how can we combat it? Is one more than the addiction? Well addiction is a disease, it's a chronic condition uh, described as chronic brain disorder by American Society of Addiction Medicine. It doesn't happen from having a lack of willpower or as a result of making bad decisions. Basically brain chemistry changes uh, with addiction over the course of time. It's a chronic condition that can affect many aspects of, our, of one's life including physical and mental health, relationships and career. There are two main forms of addiction, substance use disorder and behavioral addictions. They're all treatable and it's really crucial to seek help as soon as possible. With the substance use disorder, such as opioids or alcohol, although uh, substances differ from each other, they're all strongly activate the reward center of one's brain and produce feeling of pleasure. Use of these substances can lead to substance use disorder, although not always and they can be mild, moderate, or severe in nature. Addiction is the most severe form of substance abuse disorder. There are some behavioral addictions such as gambling or risky behaviors, and those can occur with any activity that's capable of stimulating uh, one's brain's reward system. Uh, drug addiction is an irresistible craving for a drug that out of control and compulsive use of the drug and continued use of the drug despite repeated harm, harmful consequences. They're uh, truly highly addictive and uh, in large part because they activate those powerful reward centers in one's brain. Uh, <clears throat> so when a person takes opioids repeatedly over time, body slows production of endorphins, the pleasure chemical, um, the same dose of opioids stops triggering such strong flood of those good feelings and that's when one experiences tolerance and as a result the addict tries to use higher dosage of opioids trying to chase that feeling of being high or feeling good leading to overdose the length of time uh, <clears throat> one use prescribed opioids also plays a role Researchers have found that taking opioid medications for more than a few days increases one's risk of long-term use, which increases risk of addiction. So I thought that was significant. Raising public awareness about the addiction is of most importance. Um, public health approach should seek to understand who's affected, where they are affected, the trajectories, pathways, consequences of opioid use and misuse, and how these trajectories are changing, and the factors that mitigate these uh, components. Addressing opioid crisis is uh, through access to treatment and recovery services, right? Prevention interventions can be delivered in diverse settings. That includes school systems uh, within community, healthcare systems, justice, and um, other social service settings. Uh, healthcare settings such as primary care and emergency departments uh, currently are seen as a key touch point for both prevention and treatment services. 
So what can we actively do as individuals in fighting this epidemic? Well, basically, we can learn um, how to help someone, someone from opioid overdose. Uh, first and foremost, it's important to recognize the signs and symptoms of an, of an overdose. Um, you know, if a person's face uh, is extremely pale or feels clammy to touch, uh, fingernails, lips have purple or blue coloring, body is limp, um, if they're unable to speak or they cannot be awakened, or if they start vomiting or making gargling noises, those are all can be signs and symptoms of overdose. <clears throat> The risks associated with opioid overdose are multifaceted and have severe consequences. Um, taking illegal opioids, taking more opioid medicine than prescribed, or combining opioids with other medicines or alcohol, um, those are all risks. Also having medical conditions such as sleep apnea, um, reduced kidney or liver function, that's often in people with kidney or liver conditions, um, and these folks are at risk due to the fact that the body cannot get rid of, cannot filter uh, medication um, in a timely manner, uh, leading to overdose. Also, people people over age of 65 are at high risk as well. So, how does Narcan work, and what is it really? So, Narcan or Naloxon is an opioid antagonist. That's a medicine that rapidly reverses opioid overdose. It means it attaches to opioid receptors and reverses and blocks the effects of other opioids. Naloxone can quickly restore normal breathing to a person if their breathing has slowed or stopped because of the opioid overdose. It should be given to any person who shows signs of overdose or when overdose is suspected. It can be given uh, uh, in the form of nasal spray but also injected to muscle, under skin, or into the veins, which that, that's mainly done in the medical setting. So knowing Narcan is a life server, saver, how do we use it? So when a person is unresponsive or uh, suspected of overdose, <clears throat> uh, the first step is to call, if we know their name, to call by their name or um, try to awaken them. If they're unresponsive, we can use a sternal rub which uh, with a closed fist we rub knuckles against one sternum very firmly um, if that's ineffective um, that's when we administer Narcan we also call 911 right away as, as time is critical in overdose um, and we need to get medical assistance immediately so uh, when person lays flat on their back we <clears throat> uh, we hold Narcan spray with thumb on the bottom of the plunger and first and middle finger on either side of the nozzle. We tilt the person's head back and provide support under the neck with the with the hand, gently inserting the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until the fingers on either side of the nozzle are against the bottom of person's nose. Okay. Um, uh, we move the person to the other side. It's considered a recovery position once the uh, Narcan is administered. And we watch the person closely. If the person does not respond by waking up to voice or touch or breathing normally or... Um, well, another dose may be given. Um, Narcan can be administered every two to three minutes, if available, until the person responds or emergency medical help is received. Um, Naloxan is FDA-approved medication to treat opioid and <coughs> opioid disorder and is effective in saving lives. So the most appropriate medication varies by individual and may change over time. To stem the opioid crisis, it's critical for all FDA-approved options to be available for all people with opioid use disorder. Um, Naloxone can help, but cannot overcome the major barriers for opioid use disorder, which includes high levels of misunderstanding and stigma towards drug addiction, individuals with opioid use disorder, and the medication to treat it. 
Also, inadequate education of the professionals responsible for working with people with opioid use disorder and the fragmented system of care for people with opioid use disorder and current financial and payment policies. So in conclusion, addiction, now often referred to as substance use disorder, is a disease that involves the con uh, continued use of one or more substances, even though there may be serious health and social consequences. Naloxin is a life-saving medication that rapidly blocks effects of opioids when signs and symptoms of a prescription or illicit opioid, and that includes heroin and fentanyl, overdose first appears. And although Narcan is highly effective in death prevention for opioid overdose if administered timely, the stigma associated with addiction and inadequate understanding of the disease is a contributing factor and a barrier in helping individuals affected by the disease. So, last words, Niloxin is an opioid antagonist that's used to temporarily reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. Expanding the awareness and, uh, and availability of this medication is a key part of the public health response to the opioid epidemic. Niloxin is a safe antidote to suspected overdose and, when given in time, can save a life.